Hey, what's up you guys? You're watching Team APS. I'm Paul. And I'm Alec. And today we're gonna be bringing you guys some budget replacements for some otherwise very expensive Yu-Gi-Oh cards. We gonna save you some money. Before we do, we've got a word from this video's sponsor, Triple Fantasy. What is Triple Fantasy, Alec? Triple Fantasy is a twist of a card game and an RPG offered by Mobarum. The game essentially plays like poker, but instead of matching suits and colors, you're matching classes and elements. The power of each individual card is noted by its character and level. You'll need a combination of both rare, high-level cards and superior strategy to achieve victory. The pixel art that makes up the characters in the world of Triple Fantasy is gorgeous. And if that isn't enough, the game's humor is sure to keep you locked in. If you love the graphics and character, or you're looking to flex your ability to manipulate a deck of cards, be sure to follow the link in the description to Triple Fantasy. We're not trying to say that these replacement cards are just as good, because they're not. If they were just as good, you'd be playing those instead. There's a reason cards can become expensive. It's because they, you know, they're useful at the upper level of the game. Right, the reason that we're making this video is if you are on a budget and you want something that functions similarly in you know fundamental use, and you don't want to spend hundreds of dollars on the cards. Of course, if you I save hope up, you don't want to. You save up the money, get the cards themselves. Though this will never be as good. It's a replacement. But if you do like to blow money on cards like that, we do have a PO box. So uh... send us something yourself. <laughs> All right. So starting with Borosaur Dragon. This guy is extremely good. useful. Uh, it can OTK your opponent. We all know its effect, it changes monsters to defense position, it gets a second attack, when it attacks it can gain attack points. This thing can literally end games kind of out of nowhere, it's not super hard to summon. I mean yeah it takes four monsters, but like, what deck can't do that, right? <laughs> what deck can't do that? It's 2019 Yu-Gi-Oh! And if you play Orcish right now, you know, it's your main, like, kill card. Yeah, it's a game ender, and I think that, you know, it, the price tag's warranted, but it is... 70 bucks, right? Like, you don't really want to pay that much. So, what replacements do we have? What's first? Crusadia Avramax. Yes. The new Mech Knight Crusadia Avramax. I think it's like three, two or three different archetypes. That's too much. Technically, um, if you follow the lore. So, this is a new Secret Rare Link 4 monster. It's actually just released in Dark Neo Storm, and it currently goes for only like I haven't really heard much about it. Which is really cool because it's effect is very useful. First of all, your opponent cannot target with card effects. That's very good. That's, yeah, that's standard boss monster, I, you know. And your opponent also has to attack it. They can't attack your other monsters. It's got 3,000 attacks, so it's not like they're going to want to, but what will really be the best deterrent for that is its effect. If it battles a special summon monster, you can actually have it gain attack equal to that monster's attack points. And in that way, it's basically always going to be able to swing over anything else that was special summoned yeah. and deal 3,000 damage. So that's like the new king of the battle phase. Well, it next kinda, to Moral Sword. It kind of is. I mean, the thing is, if you're looking to just deal high damage, this will do that for you in a similar way to Boral Sword. True. And even though it doesn't get the second attack, I mean, damage is damage. And this thing also even has an insurance effect. If your opponent destroys it by battle or a card effect, you can shuffle a card in the field back into the deck, and that doesn't even target. So it's really, I mean, I think it's actually quite strong. Yeah, this is a better card. If you're not going to beat your opponent this turn, he's a better card because it's hard to get rid of. Yeah, I mean, you just use Link monsters that you've already made, you know, like two Link 2s or something like that, and poof, there he is. Another valuable replacement, though, is Boral Sword Dragon's, are we calling him younger or older brother? I mean, I guess... Younger makes it sound dimin diminutive, and that's what's important here. Borlo Dragon, which, you know, had its own high price tag at a time, but now costs like eight, nine bucks, actually. It's, it's kind of funny, before Borlo Sword came out, Borlo was big boy, right? Like, you summoned him to get rid of things. He was the four. So, the thing about Borlo Dragon is he does fill a bit of a different purpose than Borlo Sword Dragon. Borlo Sword is more for damage, more for battles. Borlod instead takes monsters. He outs stuff. So he's a great way to deal with any troublesome, problematic boss monster. Literally just steal your opponent's, you know, hot My red Colossus. abyss. Yeah, or like the Thunder Dying Colossus. Y'all, he's done that to me a lot. Yeah, yeah, you can take things. You can even actually take Borlod? Or Borlsword Dragon can take a Borlod. Can be taken by Borlod Dragon. 
Anyway, yeah, so uh, this card, it doesn't necessarily do the battle phase thing, but I think that it is worth including in an extra deck. It won't end games, but it can like turn games around. So in that way, I guess it's sort of fundamentally yeah. working the same way. There's virtually no monster you can't deal with a Borload. Yeah, they have the same summoning, exact, exact same summoning uh, requirements of just three plus effect monsters. You can make a sword, you can make a load. Yes, so pick that up. It's not very expensive either. The next card is Pot of Extravagance. Yeah, so uh, came in Savage Strike. Yep. It's like 60, 70 bucks. It's a pot, so you know you have to draw two. Yeah, uh, what's useful about Pot of Extravagance, of course, is that it banishes cards from your extra deck, which for decks that don't necessarily need those cards, like maybe Altergeist or Guru Control, something in that neighborhood, mm -hmm. and you use it in Cosmos, um, it will get you just free draws. Now, you have to use it at the start of your main phase, and for the rest of your turn, you're not able to draw any additional cards. Which is fine. Yeah, which is fine. I mean, you're getting a really big plus, but it's expensive. What are some replacements? Well, if you don't love a good plus one, you can always get a neg nine from Power Desires. That's right, viewers. <laughs> you can, I can't believe people still think that. Okay, so Power Desires lets you banish 10 cards from the top of your deck to draw two cards. Now, this is a very controversial card. I get it. Some people don't like it. But for certain decks, this card can really be quite valuable. If you're running more than 40 cards, it's really good. If you run a lot of just three ofs in your deck. Yeah, you don't mind banishing the cards. It can be extremely strong. I know just as of late, like Pendulums, Pendulum Editions, yeah. that's a deck that tends to run this a lot. See it running Blue Eyes, Dark and, Lords. Oh, and those crazy decks that run, uh, what's his name? Eater of Millions. Oh yeah, yeah, like Eater of Millions, Grin Maju deck, stuff like uh. that. So, yeah, this card, it's not for everybody, but if you have it, it's, you know, a really good one. It's not super expensive, nope. and you can run, like, one copy, two copies. I generally don't do three unless it's, like, a 60-card deck, I you think. You gotta be wild to run three. Yeah, that's, you know, that's a lot, even for us Desires lovers. But if you don't <laughs> like Pot of Desires, then maybe you like Card of Demise. So mm. this can actually get you more than just a plus one. Yeah, you can, ha you can draw three. Yeah, so... Card Demise, it lets you draw until you have three cards in your hand, but you don't deal any damage that turn, you can't special summon that turn, and at the end of the turn, you have to discard everything in your hand. So, a lot of steep cost attached to that draw power. But maybe that's not a big deal, because some decks don't mind that at all. Some decks like traps. Yeah, if your deck runs lots of trap cards. Like if you play Paleo. Mm -hmm, you can literally just use Card of Demise, and then set your traps and it's okay i think the most relevant deck that i've seen play um true draco right yeah big 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 draw card for them um i think that with card demise the best part about this is that it's something where you can easily run three copies that you can't really necessarily say the same about extravagance or um part of desires but three card demise tends to be pretty common in a lot of the trap heavy decks and i i mean it's cheap too it's actually less Depending on where you look, it could be even less than Desires, I think. Well, no, Desires is reprinted. They're both very cheap, honestly. At one point, both of these cards are on our list of, like, most expensive cards. It's, a, it's a kind of funny. I made a video like this, like, two years ago or something, where it was, like, budget replacements for Pot of Desires. And, like, here we are, and now it's on the budget. Now it's budget. So our next two cards are, admittedly, hard to replace. These are very good cards, and they do so much more than their effects say that yeah. uh, you just can't really replace them. But that's how we're gonna try. So let's start with the Dangers, Tsuchinoko. And Nessie. Yes. Uh, infamous cards, really. A lot of people hate these things. So Ban them, good. Konami, they're so Team awful. Team up with Jackalope and you've got, a, you've got an engine going. Yeah, the Danger engine is extremely powerful, but the two necessary parts of it both cost 50 bucks and you have to have three of each. You can get away with two of each depending on the deck, but I mean, that's, you know, potato most people just run three, 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 right? Yeah, like, it's, you know, it's a lot of money, regardless of what your mm. ratios are. And the Danish do a very specific thing, like you said, they, you know, your opponent picks, if they discard themselves, they'll get an effect, if they don't, then they get summoned and you draw. So they're good for draw power, field presence, consistency in general. Yeah. And they make hand traps, just, they just trash hand traps. Yeah, now, our budget replacements, ironically enough, <laughs> are... Other dangers. Other danger monsters. This is probably something that, you know, this isn't a new thought, right? 
Yeah, we're essentially saying run the bad dangers. Mm -hmm. At the bare minimum, they still have the whole we'll let you draw thing and yeah. summon themselves. Yeah. If you're lucky. Yes. Now, if your <laughs> opponent happens to pick them and they get discarded, that's where their effects are not going to necessarily be as useful. Mm. You know, I will, okay, I will say this. Mothman, he's okay, He's right? not that bad, both you and your opponent. Like, if your opponent picks him, you send him to the graveyard, and then both you and your opponent will then draw and discard a card. Yeah, so that's actually not bad. That's still getting you some draw power. I also think that Nessie and Bigfoot, um, you know, Bigfoot's level eight, and also the Thunder one's level eight. Yeah. So even though most people look at Nessie, Bigfoot's okay, and if you run Bigfoot and Thunderbird, they're both level eight, you can, if your deck plays like a, like a rank eight strategy, like blue eyes, blue eyes, even like dark lords, like running trade yeah. in or something, you can actually use these instead. And you're if really you're playing budget chaos thunder. Sometimes getting an extra eight on board helps a lot. I agree. And so the all the alternate danger monsters, again, not as good as the core engine of Nessie, like, Suchi, and Jackalope. Over the course of like a large regional or YCS. They will start to burn you, and you will be angry. But I think that locally... Yeah, in small settings, we're not going to play a few times. Sometimes they can be just as good, honestly. Yeah. And the last card that we're going to try to provide a budget replacement for it was literally... <laughs> Bear the, with us, man. Literally the hardest card. I've, Konami's done a very good job of making it specific, is Fantastical Dragon Phantasme. <laughs> the, and it's the most expensive, too. I guess that By makes far. sense, huh? Hundred dollar card. It lets you. It can be special summon when your opponent special summons a link monster. You draw cards equal to the number of link monsters that your opponent controls plus one, and then you put cards back into the deck from your hand equal to the number of link monsters they control. So now, wait they have, a minute. That yeah. doesn't sound like a hundred dollar card though. Yeah, and that's the strange part. It doesn't on paper seem like it's a particularly strong card, and truthfully, I don't think it's worth a hundred dollars and as good as it is. But the fact of the matter is, this does do a very special job in a lot of decks. If you're facing Salamangrates, if you're facing Orcus, and you're going second, you're able to summon this thing out, and it's able to fix hands, and that's a really big deal. If you summon it when they have, you know, two Link Monsters out, right? Bailings and Sunlight Wolf, for instance, you'll draw three cards. And only have to put back two. Put back two, and it's any two cards from your hand. So it's a lot like a Sorry Yuya. In your opponent's turn, you plus. Yeah, and you're able to kind of like fix the hand, get a plus. Plus, Fantasma is out on the field. He has an effect. He can stop, you know, things that target. It's one of those weird cards that we really did struggle to find a replacement. But we do have something. Something. All right, you can go first in the walk of shame here. Uh, well, I don't, I don't know if I want to be the one. Mm. Okay, so bear with me. This is a stretch. But I said, Iron Dragon Tiamat. Oh God, I can hear Show it. your work. I can hear it. Okay, so, <laughs> all right, bear with me. Against strategies like Salaman Great and Orcus, they're gonna make a board that includes a Link monster and they're gonna play traps. Orcus will usually get Crescendo and two Fog Blades. Salaman Great will get a Rage and a War, right? Mm -hmm. Well, what if they set them in such a way where they make a column of three cards. Yeah, then you can summon Tiamat and BAM! And blow it up! It's a quick effect, too. That's it's right. Quick now, so you can actually summon Tiamat in, in your opponent's turn, like Phantasme. And when it gets summoned, it destroys everything in the column it's summoned to. And they can't use those zones anymore. Yeah. Kind, like, of, kind of crazy. It's like, not a, This is not a small brain card. It's a big brain card. You gotta... Yeah, I mean, now, <laughs> gotta take some granted, risks. this doesn't, it doesn't draw you cards, right? But it does really hamper your opponent if you resolve it. Yeah, they can't true. even chain their Crescendo or their Fog Blade. No, it was just they set. Just set them. You can hamper your opponent on the very first turn. And it fields a body that they mm -hmm. can't really, they, they will struggle to get rid of turn one. Did you know, fun fact, Iron Dragon Tiamat and Fantastical Dragon Phantasma are from the same series of dark dragon monsters? That's right, along with Xernatron and... And, um, Brotar. And yeah. Brotar. Now, even though his suggestion sounded bad, mine's really no better. <laughs> uh, and mine is something that somebody suggested online, so I figured I would include it. It's Dino Wrestler Pancratops. Which doesn't really do anything close to what Phantasme does, but it costs like literally a hundredth of the price. 
So why not? You're gonna have to. Yeah, explain this. Cause so you can't use it at your opponent's turn exactly, but when you start your turn, it is a good way to break boards. You special summon it. It's big and then it can tribute itself and pop a card and that's a quick effect so it can bait cards out. I don't know either, but I figured <laughs> I'd include it. Um, someone said it online, I figured it out, I might as well put it in. I mean, so, look, look, y'all, it's big with a quick effect. What, yeah. else you, what else you need? Yeah, that's as much as you're gonna get out of this video. <laughs> anyway though, Hopefully this video was helpful and you did find some potential budget replacements for a few cards. And you know, we tried for the others. Yeah, we, we tried. Um, that's it for the video now. Let us know down in the comments, what other budget replacements would you guys suggest as ways to replace these cards? Especially Phantasmic. Yeah, who has If you can think of one, please Come tell up me. with like a more wild idea than Tia Madden. Yeah, I sure, dare, right? Yeah. Like, I don't know, maybe. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, that's the vid. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Give thumbs up if you did. Subscribe, of course. If you loved it. Remember to check out Triple Fantasy. In description. Yes, it's on iOS, it's on Android. They kindly sponsored this video and we actually played it for a while and it's pretty good. So you should check it out. Yeah, I love the um, home screen where it's a deck of cards and you can just mess with them. It's not really part of the game, it's just enjoyable. It reminds you of like playing with cards on the Yu-Gi-Oh mat too, so. Anyways, that's going to be it. Without further ado, we will catch you guys in the next one. Oh, they just have to just go yeah, buy yeah, the shirt. Yeah. Okay. That was it, that was it. Go buy the shirt.